Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're just gonna be doing a few updates on some of the indicators that we use. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we have a few of the indicators that we like to use for macro moves of the Bitcoin market. And you know they range from looking at say the regression bands and if you guys remember when we were back in this regression band for the better part of 2020 um, we left it in November the last time we came out of it was in 2019 but we for the better part of 2020 we were in this band and we said you know one day we will leave this band and people will look back of course and wish they had bought more Bitcoin down here um, and so we're just sort of going through this journey. We'll see how high we can go before we get a correction, but we're just gonna be looking at a few different metrics to see you know, how things may line up. So this is, our first, this is our regression band. For us to get to the top of the regression band, we would need to actually get to, um, let's see, it would be 54,220. So to get to the top of the regression band, it would be 54,000. Um, and that would be the, the bottom part of the regression band. If we went to the top part of the regression band today, it would correspond to 79,875. Remember, these are both monotonically increasing functions. Therefore, they will continue to go up as we march forward in time. The second thing we want to look at is the, the regression rainbow that we have. Uh, and let me see where that one is. I think I need to go over here and find it. So... We have this regression rainbow, and, and we've used this to try to identify, you know, macro moves in the market, right? Macro moves in the market, whether it's, you know, these accumulation phases that we've had in the past, or identifying new accumulation ranges as they occur. So this one was this one. And then in the same manner, we've had more or less this accumulation range as well. And we've always contended that we can have moves that take us well out of these bands, right? We had one in 2019. I think a lot of times people forget that Bitcoin rallied from 3100 to $1,400 over a year ago and, and ultimately, ultimately came back down. Now, we're not saying we have to come back down. We're just saying that we've been up in this regression band even during this accumulation phase because we had some, you know, we had a, a little bit of accumulation phase here. We went out of it, came back into it here, and now we're out of it again. And over here, again, we are we were more overvalued at the time than we are now. For us to get to the same spot on this regression band, back then it corresponded to around 14K. Um, now it would correspond to around 31K. So if we were to zoom in, and see where would we need to go to get to the same level, it would actually be around 31, 32K or so for us to get to this to the same point of overextension as compared to 2019. Um, another thing that is interesting, of course, is if you go and get the log of the price divided by the 20 week moving average. Now, you might wonder, well, why does Ben use the 20 week moving average if you're new? Uh, the reason, of course, is because it tends to be our support during a bull market. And we said time and time again, back when we tested this support region a few weeks ago or a few months ago, we said if we hold it as support, we are likely to see a, a very quick, you know, changing sentiment, right? The sentiment can change very quickly if we hold it as support. And that's exactly what happened. And of course, I did not think we would we would rally this high this quickly. Of course I did not. I did not have a YouTube channel back at the time. I also think this was a pretty impressive rally. So we always need to remember, right? The reason we're here is because Bitcoin has these bubbles that form. We never know how high they're gonna go. Uh, ultimately, we do know they'll fall back down, but this one could continue to rally for you know, several more weeks or months before it comes back down. So these things are really hard to predict. Um, uh, one of the things that I want to show is is this indicator, and it's just the log of the price, again, divided by the 20-week moving average. 
it's color coded green if the closing price of Bitcoin is above both the 20 week SMA and or or I should say not and or the 21 week EMA and it's colored red if it's below both of them. So you can generally see our bull market phases and our bear market phases. Now the interesting thing about this is as I, as I showed with the regression rainbow, uh, even with reference to the 20 week SMA, we're still not as overextended as we were back then. Okay, so we're still not even as overextended. And in fact, to get as overextended, we would need to go to a value of around 0.61. Now you might wonder, right? What what does that mean? What like what does a value of 0.61 mean? in with regards to, uh, you know, to to this. So we we just take the log of the price divided by what the projected value of the 20 week moving average would be at the time. It's currently, as we know, it's currently at around uh, 14,500. Right? You can see that right right here the red the red number 14620 according to this chart of course we would not anticipate necessarily getting to the top of this range you know tomorrow or, or something right it could take it could take another week or two potentially if we were to continue this trend and if we were then the 20 week moving average would be over fifteen thousand dollars so what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like the 15 uh, the 20 week moving average is fifteen thousand two hundred dollars and then we're going to set it equal to 0.61 and solve for the price um, and what that gets you is a valuation of 27,974. So if Bitcoin were to get as overextended as it was in 2019, according to this metric, it would correspond to almost a $28,000 Bitcoin, which is also similar. Uh, or it's a double what we achieved in 2019, right? So if you, you know, if you look at, say, a trend like this, right, or, or something similar, um, and let's go up to, say, 28K, Maybe we'll look back and see, you know, a macro trend that looks looks something like that. I don't really know, uh, but it would be interesting if we got up to twice what the 2019 short-term peak was. Okay. Now we're not saying that if we if we do come back down, which we will eventually, we're not necessarily saying that we're going to break the 20-week. I would like to think we would hold the 20-week moving average here. You see, we broke we broke through it, and we even broke through it half a year later as well. It was another half a year later when we held it at support. So whenever we do come back down, we would want to see Bitcoin hold the 20-week moving average as support. And we know that right now it's currently at around 14,600, give or take a few bucks, depending on what exchange you use. Right? What's a few bucks among friends? So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the the macro trend line. And in order to do that, we need to pull up the BLX. Okay, so we're going to pull up the BLX, and here. We're gonna pull up the log of the price divided by the 20 week. We're gonna go all the way out. And again, we're gonna look at this macro trend all the way down. And the first thing we know is that this trend will break at some point. Remember, most trends will theoretically break at some point. And there's, there's more of a fundamental reason why this one would break. We know that the log of one equals zero. So if the price is the same thing as the 20 week SMA, then you're taking the log of one, which would be zero. This indicates that anything below zero, it means the price is below the 20 week moving average. This is a good indicator to see, okay, we're holding it as support in this range. Or in this range, yeah, this is a bear market, right? Maybe starting to hold it as support, and in this range we know it's a bear market. So with this in mind, we would we you know we might use this to to look at these macro peaks that occur, okay? that somewhat occur in this range in terms of overextension from the 20 week moving average. Now, if we were to go back up to it, it would correspond to around 0 0.72, 0 0.71, 0 0.74, depends on exactly how you draw the line. Um, but of course, if we were to go to it, let's just figure out what the price would be again. It's been another couple weeks since we've looked at it. Let's say it went to 0 0.72, and by that time, the 20 week moving average, let's just um, guess that it'll be around $16,000. If the 20 week moving average is set $16,000 and we get overextended uh, to that upper upper downtrend channel there that we have, it would correspond to almost a $33,000 Bitcoin. If it were say, if we slightly redrew the line and it were 0.74, then it would correspond to a $33,535 Bitcoin. 
And there, you, some of you might say, well, why does Ben say that this necessarily has to break? Well, again, if it didn't break, it wouldn't really make a whole lot of sense. And, and, and why, would it make not, why would it not make a whole lot of sense? Well, if you extend this out, it will take it until approximately 2028 or so. So if we extend this out, go all the way over, we can see that eventually the trend line will get below zero. Okay, so once it's below zero, it, it implies that the price would always have to be lower than the 20 week moving average, which I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense considering I don't see Bitcoin trending to zero later this decade. I think it will continue to gain value over time, obviously not monotonically, but it'll have these bubbles pop, bubble pop and continue on. So eventually we will need to break through this line because otherwise it would imply, you know, if we come up to it and we don't hold it and we, and, or let's say we, we break through it now, that's a possibility of course, but if we hold it here and then, you know, come back down, test it again, come back up, you know, eventually, eventually we will have to break through. Otherwise it would imply that the price of Bitcoin will just constantly stay below the 20 week moving average, um, which is almost certainly not true. But it's just one more indicator that we can use to potentially get an idea of how far overextended could we be and still be pretty much in line with past market cycles. Now, one thing to also remember is if you look at the regression bands, you can see that this peak here that we had in early 2013 did not make it to the top. However, it still hit overextension on the 20 week moving average, still went to that peak. So it's always possible that we, you know, we, we come up to the 20 week SMA or we, we get to a certain level of overextension from the 20 week SMA before coming back down. Uh, that doesn't mean that the price obviously can't go higher. It just means that we need to wait a while for the 20 week SMA to catch up. And, and so that we're not so far overextended. For now, when you're in a bubble, it's really hard knowing where the top is. Um, you know, back in 2017, of course, there were a lot of people that thought the top was at 10K, at 15K, probably some people that thought it was at 20K, but there's also a lot that thought it was at 25K and, and never sold. Or some people that thought it was going to go to 100K and were buying profusely at 20K and, and you know, the rest is history. Now they're up, but you know, the time value of their money was locked away potentially in Bitcoin if they never sold for the last several years. So, you know, when you when you're when you're trending up and and if you do take profits along the way, which I always think is a good idea, if you are taking profits along the way, generally speaking, if you take them and the price continues to go up in the short term, a lot of people will will mock you because, you know, they'll say, oh, you know, you said that this was the top. Um, but again, on this channel, we're, you know, nothing we do here is all in or all out. Remember, dynamically DCA the sells. So if I start selling any Bitcoin, which I have started selling some, of course, as I've mentioned on the channel for the last few weeks, if I do ever start selling some, at this point, we're still fairly early on in a bubble. In terms of a Bitcoin macro bubble, we're still fairly early on. So I would still hold the majority of my Bitcoin at this time. And of course, everyone on the premium list knows that I still hold a majority of my Bitcoin at this time. But it doesn't mean you can't take some profits. Um, and you know, a lot, of, a lot of times you can take profits and, and not necessarily put them into USD. You could put them into other cryptocurrencies that you are, you know, are, are macro bullish on, like Ethereum or some other coins that you think will catch up at some point. Um, a lot of times, what I do is, you know, I, I might sell it to USD, and then if there's other coins that I regularly DCA, I just add that to my dry powder that I systematically move back into the market when there's other cryptocurrencies at lower risk levels. So that's how I operate. Um, I understand other people might might operate differently. So, uh, with that said. Uh, we know that it can extend higher, uh, short-term bubbles can always exist. And another thing to clear up is that when we talk about short-term bubbles, we're not talking about a macro bubble, right? We're not talking about one of these. We're, if you zoom in, again, we're talking about these things, right? Where we come well above the 20 week moving average, we get fairly overextended and we come back down. We get overextended and we come back down. Several times it's happened, every single time, you know, it, it, it's impossible for some people to imagine a correction, but we've had several of them in the past. 
um, ranging from 20% during a bull market, even up to 40% in a bull market. So I get the institutional money is, is here, uh, but I, I think it will continue to flow in for, for, for years and years and years. I don't, I don't think it's going to be um, just a stampede of institutional money that takes place and we don't see any corrections whatsoever. But I guess time will, you know, time will elucidate the truth. So we'll see what happens. So uh, this indicator, again, if we go to the, if we go to the top that we had here and we go there in the next one to two weeks, then it might imply a $27,000, $28,000 Bitcoin, I think around a $28,000 Bitcoin. If we were to go to the macro downtrend line that we have going all the way back to 2011, then it might imply over a $30,000 Bitcoin if we were to get there within the next one to two weeks. But again, these are, of course, subject to change because if Bitcoin were to just go sideways for two months and then move up, then by that point, the 20 week moving average will have caught up a significant amount and therefore we will no longer be quite as overextended in terms of the 20 week moving average as we are now. So it's all it's not a specific number. You know, when people say like, what's your price target? What's this, what's that? For me, it's never an absolute number because it, it's tell me, okay, tell me how we got there. Tell me how we get there. And then we can discuss, um, you know, the implications of that. But if you just say, you know, if you just say, would you buy Bitcoin at $100,000? Well, if it went to $100,000 tomorrow, the answer would be no. If, if, if the you know if Bitcoin went to two hundred thousand dollars this market cycle or one hundred and fifty thousand dollars this market cycle, and then retrace back down to seventy five k or fifty k, and then slowly worked its way up to back up to a hundred thousand over a couple of years, then maybe that would be a point where I would buy at a hundred k. So it always depends on it's like how did we get there, um, in terms of uh, of determining you know is it a is it a potentially decent buy or is it not? Again, I've always said. For me, it's not about the absolute return. It's about the risk adjusted return. There's always going to be cryptocurrencies that, you know, potentially go up um, if you don't own them or you wish you owned more of them. But there's always something else, right? There's always another time you can invest. There's always another accumulation phase for Bitcoin, for other cryptocurrencies. So for me, again, as it always has been, it's about the risk adjusted returns and um, I'm happy with my Bitcoin stack. I'm, I'm excited to, to continue to see how high Bitcoin will go. I'm personally, you know, if I, I personally am not buying Bitcoin anymore because I'm happy to have accumulated it in the regression band for the last couple of years. But as I've maintained before, if you're new to the market, which is what I often get questions about, if you're new to the market and you don't own any Bitcoin, then you can always get some, right? And, and, and just increase your risk tolerance realizing that the short-term ROI might not be that great, but that if you're going to hold for the next two or three years, then you should be pretty well off. Um, again, this is not financial advice. This is just my own opinions on the market. You need to make those decisions yourself. So hopefully this, hopefully this sort of, you know, macro analysis uh, makes sense. Hopefully, we, you know, looking at the regression bands, looking at uh, the 20 week moving average in terms of how overextended it makes, overextended is makes sense. Um, if you guys like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel. Uh, my wife actually got me this shirt. I thought it was pretty cool. It says Into the Cryptoverse and it's got the logo for the holidays. So uh, thank you to her for, for getting that for me. Let me know what you guys think of it. Um, anyways, I think that'll wrap it up. Remember to subscribe to the channel. If you guys like the content, let's go for 80,000 subscribers. Give the video a thumbs up. We have a Telegram channel, over 10,000 people. If you're looking for a community to chat crypto with, especially if the markets are going to get overheated you know, in terms of the altcoin market pretty soon, it might be nice to have a community. Um, and I think we we do moderate it pretty well. We have a lot of good moderators in there. And then, of course, if you want access to the premium list, you can check that out in the description below as well. And we can we are continuing to have the holiday sale. Uh, you get access to the weekly reports, the weekly videos, the trading view indicators that you see, um, the risk dashboard, uh, and a few other things, and uh, an alerts channel on Telegram, a chat room as well. So make sure you guys subscribe. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will see you guys next time. Bye.